Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Faith is one thing, praying is another. You're putting the two together. Well, I put them together because Jesus puts them together. I think a scripture that would be known to many people is when Jesus said, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And this causes a lot of people difficulty, actually, because many say, well, I do believe, yet God still hasn't done it. So that causes them confusion. I mean, is it that the word of God is wrong? No, that can't be the case. Is it then that they think they believe that they don't believe? Well, I think it's more likely to be that people perhaps don't understand what it means to pray with faith. So we're going to go to Mark 11, where we have um, a little section which is often referred to people as the prayer of faith, Jesus teaching people to pray with faith. We're going to look at this in in some detail, and I think what will happen for many, many people is that they will come to a whole new understanding of faith and a whole new understanding of how they can pray and take from the Lord what he has already chosen to give them. During the course of this week, I think all this will become very much clearer to people. Now, I'm going to read the section from verse 20 of chapter 11 of Mark. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, Believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Now, I'm actually going to start right in the middle of that passage, which may seem strange, and then we'll go back and look at the whole passage. In verse 24, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Now, what does he really mean by this? How can we believe that we've received something if we see no evidence of that? Is Jesus saying that when we pray, we've got to have in our mind's eye the matter being resolved, the sick person being healed, or whatever the situation may be, well, we could certainly interpret it in that way, and we could say, yes, there is a sense in which when we pray, we need to see what the answer is. We're not praying question marks. You can't pray question marks with faith. In other words, if you pray with faith, you know the specific outcome for which you're praying. So is Jesus saying, well, you need to be so sure of God that you are convinced that the outcome is exactly what you pray for. Now, I think Jesus is saying this. Undoubtedly, he's saying this. Believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. But this raises the question, well, how can we be so sure? How how can we be sure that what we're praying for really is the will and the purpose of God, and we can be absolutely sure that that prayer is going to get answered? Now, we need to backtrack a bit to understand what Jesus is saying. A few weeks ago, we were talking on this program about our inheritance in Christ. And I was explaining to everyone that what happens when you're born again is that you are put into Christ. And you're not put into the human Jesus as he used to be nearly 2,000 years ago. You're put into the living reigning, glorified Christ who is seated in glory in heaven. Uh, This is why Paul says that God sees us already seated in heavenly places. He sees us in his Son. This is why he also says we're co-heirs with Christ, why he also says that God has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. 
This is why Paul says, you have come to fullness of life in Christ. Now, I want you to imagine Christ in heaven. I don't mean just picture him, but to think of Christ in heaven. You see, while he was on earth, he was limited. He could only be in one place at one time. Now, of course, he was in heaven before he was born as a baby. So he had to limit himself from this God who was everywhere present to becoming present amongst us here on earth as a baby. But after his crucifixion and resurrection, when he returned to the Father, he was released back into the almightiness that was his before he was, cre before he was born into the world. He was released back into the glory that he had to leave to become man. He was released back, if you like, into his expensiveness. Now, what uh, these many scriptures that I was mentioning a few minutes ago, and many, many others that there's no time to mention, what they're all saying is that when a person is born again, when they become a true believer in Jesus Christ, they are in Christ, they're in his expansiveness, that all that total life that is there, that, that is Christ's now in heaven, becomes the believer's. And that's why he or she is a co-heir with Christ. That is why we have the fullness of life that Jesus came to give. You remember he said, I have come that men may have life and have it in all its fullness. Now Jesus made a key statement to the disciples just before he went to the cross. When he was talking with them at the Last Supper, he said, Abide in me and I in you. Remain in me and I in you. Go on constantly living in me and I in you. That's really what uh, the words mean in the original Greek. So he was saying to the disciples, you're distressed and grieved because I'm about to leave you, but something even more wonderful has happened, is about to happen. He who has been with you will be in you. And he is also saying, and you will be in me. You won't just have me with you, but you will be in me. And you won't just be in me, the human Jesus. You'll be in me, the glorified Christ. And therefore, my life will become your life. My love will become your love. My joy will become your joy. My peace will become your peace. All that I am will become yours. So Paul says that God has already blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places because all that life of Jesus in heaven is ours now. Now, in your experience, Colin, as that realization has dawned on you over the years, is it that that has really increased your faith? Oh, incredibly. I mean, that, this has to be the foundation of our faith, what God has done for us in Christ. Now, all that is only possible because of what he did on the cross. But you see, he didn't just die on the cross to forgive us our sins and make it possible for us to go to heaven. He died on the cross so that now we could live in Christ and his life could become our lives so we can live here on earth, not so much in our own strength, but with Christ in us, with his life, his love, his power, his joy, his peace, everything that he is working through us. So we have this rich inheritance in heaven, and what the prayer of faith does is to take hold of what we have in heaven, and if you can put it this way, bring it down to earth so that it gets released into our lives, into our circumstances, into our bodies even. So when Jesus says, believe it, you have received it, I think in one sense he was talking prophetically because uh, he, he was talking about you know what, what he was going to make possible for the disciples. That in Christ we have received everything. We've received his life, we've received his love, we've received all the virtue of his cross, forgiveness of sins, healing of our diseases, we've, we've received uh, power and authority over the devil. There's nothing that has been left out. Whatever was Christ's becomes ours. And there are so many scriptures in the New Testament to verify that. So what Jesus is saying is, Believe that you have received the fullness of life that I came to give you. Believe that you really are in me and everything that is in me is yours. Believe all the promises of, the, of, of my word. Believe that you have what the word says you have. And then you see, when you ask in prayer, you know you're asking for what God has already given you. It's already part of your inheritance. You remember the prodigal son came to the father and asked for his share of the inheritance. 
Now, he was a son. He wasn't an outsider. He was a part of the family. And clearly, the father in that parable is God. So one of the sons, one of his children, is coming to him and says, I want my share of the inheritance. And because he knew that he had the right to his inheritance, he obviously came believing that the father would give it to him. And so the father did. Now, sadly, the boy went off and wasted the inheritance. But you see, <clears throat> because it was his inheritance, the father gave it to him. In that same parable, the sad thing is that the elder brother was working very hard, slaving away, as he put it, for the father. But he didn't have any confidence that he could come and even ask for a baby goat so that he could have a feast with his friends. And he was really miffed. He was put out. You give all this inheritance to um, your son who goes off and wastes it, and you haven't even given me uh, a, a baby goat that I could have a feast with my friends. He's really miffed. And, and uh, it never occurred to him, well, if the father gave my brother his full inheritance, surely he would give me a goat if I'd asked. Surely he would have given me whatever belonged to my inheritance. And you see, that's the unbelief. It's the unbelief that persists in many Christians, unfortunately. They don't believe that they have the fullness of life that God says in his word we have already been given. So they don't come with the expectation that they have the, every right to ask the Father to release their inheritance into their lives. They don't believe that they have received when they ask. So you see, it's very fundamental to the whole life of faith to believe that we are in the position and in the relationship with God that he says we're in, and that therefore we have every right to come and expect to receive. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 